Hi friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the most frightening topic of English literature, which is literary theory. But before we embark into the journey of literary theory, let me tell you one thing. Literary theory is not very hard. It just involves that you should understand the concept and once you understand the theory and how to apply those theory in literature, literary theory becomes one of the most interesting part of literature. But before we understand literary theory, it is important that we should understand literary criticism. Literary criticism, he dheere dheere gradually develop okay, literary theory mein convert hota hai. Now, let's first look at what criticism is all about. Uh, hum sab parties mein, shadiyo mein jaate hain, when we go to a party in order to uh, meet our friends and relatives, we have this uh, habit of observing things in that party. We look at the food, the kind of flavor it has, we look at the decoration, we look at the people, the crowd that is there in that party and next day when we come back home, we talk to our friends over the phone and we give our opinion about that party. We'll tell them that okay the food was not so good but the desserts were good and we talk about decoration and we give our analysis and opinion about the party. That process is called criticism. It is called critiquing. Uh, those of you who confuse criticism by criticizing, I would like to tell you that these two are very different things. Criticism doesn't mean criticizing something. It means critiquing something. Criticism uh, doesn't mean kisi cheez ko bura bolna. It actually means judging that thing, analyzing that thing and telling about the positive as well as the negative aspects of that particular thing. Uh, we critique so many things. When we movie dekhne jaate hai, we all have this habit ki movie dekhne se pehle bhi, uh, read the critics review, critics rating about that movie. And those critics who are the film critics, they tell us about the movie, they tell uh, how the plot is, how the storyline is, the characters, how the actors have acted in that movie, is that movie worth watching, uh, what kind of age group uh, the movie is targeting. So all these questions are being answered by the film critic. Uh, if you are a person who loves animated movie, then I would recommend you to watch Rata Tui. It's a wonderful movie uh, in which we have a critique of a food critic who goes to restaurants and in those restaurants he eats the food and he gives his opinion about that restaurant or her restaurant he sales uske opinion pe uh, depend karti hai because people read his reviews and then decide which restaurant they want to visit so it's a lovely movie by pixar company so you can go and watch that movie it's about this a small mouse who turns to be a chef and he loves cooking food so it's a must watch movie and you will also understand what critiquing something is all about so this this is all about criticism uh, and how we critique things around us. Now let's look at literature and how criticism applies to literature. Now when it comes to literature, we have so many books. There are people who read those books and give their opinion about those books. Criticism in literature can be on two bases. Number one, uh, poets and writers can talk about poetry and literature in general or they can talk about some specific books. When a writer criticism, then he talks about general literature, like Aristotle did in his poetics. He has not talked about any specific writer or work, but then he has given certain important characteristics of a good uh, theatre, a good play, a good poem. Then on the other hand, we have uh, writers like Matthew Arnold. He has written this work called Study of Poetry. And in this work, Study of Poetry, he has talked about the touchstone method. He has said that there are certain writers who are very good and whose po passages of whose poetry can be used as reference and yardstick in order to judge the poetry of other writers. And then he has criticized several writers like Chaucer. So Matthew Arnold ki jo criticism hai, that is based on specific works and specific writers whereas the criticism by uh, Aristotle is about literature in general. So in literature we can have two kinds of criticism. Also we must understand that criticism bohat pehle, bohat purane time se chala raha hai. Greek period, jab uh, Plato, Aristotle rehte the Greek mein, wahaan se ye chala hua hai. 500 BC, maybe had Greek 
क्रिटिक्स देन रोमन एम्पायर आया रोमन एम्पायर में होरियस लंजाइनस रोमन क्रिटिक्स थे देन उसके बाद में वी हैड डिफरेंट क्रिटिक्स फ्रॉम ब्रिटेन द फर्स्ट पर्सन वॉज फिलिप सिडनी जिसने डिफेंस ऑफ पोइजी लिखा एंड लेटर ऑन वी हैव एनलाइटनमेंट क्रिटिक्स वी हैव रोमांटिक्स विक्टोरियन एंड विक्टोरियन पीरियड तक आते आते क्रिटिसिजम अपने पीक पे पहुंच गया रोमांटिक्स विक्टोरियन के बाद में जब मॉडर्न आता है तब शुरू होता है लिटरी थ्योरी लिटरी थ्योरी क्या है उसके बारे में हम बात करेंगे बट देन यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट लिटरी थ्योरी हैज डेवलप्ड फ्रॉम लिटरी क्रिटिसिज्म इट सेल्फ एंड लिटरी क्रिटिसिज्म ने ही धीरे धीरे शेप चेंज करके लिटरी थ्योरी का शेप ले लिया है सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट लिटरी थ्योरी एंड क्रिटिसिज्म नाउ लेट्स लुक एट लिटरी थ्योरी एंड वाई लिटरी थ्योरी इज इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वॉट इज लिटरी थ्योरी इन जनरल In order to understand literary theory, I would rather tell you that uh, let's take example of car. If you look at a car from different perspective, different angles, you will have different opinion about that car. If you look at the car from front, then you look at the car from back, from side angle, from other left side angle, right side angle, you'll have different opinion about the car. Similarly, when I put pink colored glasses on my eyes, uh, the entire world will look pink. If I put red colored glasses on my eye the entire world will look red similarly if I put marxist glasses on my eyes and then I look at a piece of literature I will take out all the elements which talk about class conflict about how ruling class is actually uh, degrading uh, the society and how the poor class is suffering if I look the same text from feminist classes I will look at the Uh, problems faced by the females in that text i will look at how the uh, female protagonist faces the challenges just because she is a female so uh, literary theory basically helps you look at a single piece from different perspective uh, let's take example of mansfield park if you look at mansfield park from feminist point of view you will look at the character of fanny price and how she gradually develops into a individual If you look the same text, Mansfield Park, from uh, Marxist point of view or from post-colonial point of view, you will see how uh, Britain was colonizing and degrading the condition of other colonized countries. So similar text looked from different perspective. Actually, literary theory की अगर हम बात करें तो एक चीज आपको समझनी बहुत essential है कि literary theory helps in order to give historic and cultural significance to the text it is not talking about the text but it is talking how the society influences the text so ek hi literature ke piece ko jab aap alag alag literary theory ki glasses se dekhte hain to you come up with different interpretation and that is how literary theory helps in analyzing and interpreting literature so literary criticism is basically about critiquing a piece of literature but criticism was done by very uh, famous critics जिन्होंने बहुत कुछ पढ़ा है एंड ओनली देन दे कैन गिव देयर ओपिनियन बिकॉज आज हम जिन्होंने ज्यादा कुछ नहीं पढ़ा वो अगर एक पीस पे क्रिटिसिज्म देंगे तो वी वुड ट्राई एंड गिव अ वेरी फॉल्टी क्रिटिसिज्म बट व्हेन फिलिप सिडनी विलियम शेक्सपियर मैथ्यू ऑर्नल सच great writers give their opinion on a work that opinion is valued because they are well read and they have so much knowledge about literature literary criticism uh, will help you in critiquing a world whereas literary theory will help you in critiquing the text yourself you yourself become a critic and you yourself can uh, interpret the literature by using different literary lenses so literary criticism is basically about critiquing uh, by important critics literary theory on the other hand is about critiquing the piece of literature yourself criticism deals with great writers talking about great works theory deals with us talking about great works i am looking at a certain piece of literature from different point of view and giving my opinion is what literary theory is all about the first important literary theory is new criticism new criticism uh, is a literary theory which developed in britain in 1920s and the name new criticism is taken from a essay written by john crow ransom by the same name so john crow ransom wrote an essay new criticism which gave this new theory or which is called new criticism why it is called new criticism because it is a shift from old criticism old criticism is uh, a kind of criticism wherein you see author's background and then you analyze the text 
New criticism says that meaning is generated only through text. You look at a text, you closely read the text and then you find out the meaning. Author's intention is not important. Why? Because there's a beautiful essay written under New Criticism uh, titled Intentional Fallacy. Under Intentional Fallacy, the writer says that fallacy means false, intention means author's intention. So we don't know author's intentional. So if we don't know the intention of author while he is writing the work, how can we judge the work based on his intention? If a writer is writing a work thinking something in mind and then he is writing it, we don't know what he is thinking in his mind. So how can we interpret that ye jo likha hai author ne ye ye soch ke likha hoga? Because uski soch to hum trace kari nahi sakte. He is dead. So we cannot see what he was thinking when he was alive and while he was writing the work. So new criticism basically says ki jo book aapke saamne hai ya jo piece of literature aapke saamne hai, usme jo words likhe hoi hai, sirf unhe padke analyze kariye. Author ka background important nahi hai. Author ne kya soch ke likha ye important nahi hai. Because author ki soch hum aaj ke time pe samaj nahi the author is dead so if the author is dead we cannot see what was he thinking while he was writing that book so this is what new criticism is all about now we have another important literary theory which is called formalism formalism also came around 1920s Britain may 1920s where we had new criticism Europe ke other parts may in French and Russia we had form formalism Formalism and New Criticism is almost same. Both of them are talking about the same thing. New Criticism is saying close reading of text is important and the meaning is generated to, through text. On the other hand, Formalism is saying that form is important, structure, style, just tahe se ek poem ko likha gaya hai, that is important. On the basis of those structures, style and symbols, you can judge the text. So, Formalism is looking at the form of the text. New criticism is looking at the close reading. Both of them are talking about the same thing but in different countries. New criticism started in Britain 1920s. Formalism started in two countries, Russia and French. So we have two branches of formalism, French formalism and Russian formalism. Also two main leaders of formalism are Viktor Shavosky. Viktor Shavosky was the head of Moscow Literary Circle and we have another important character who is from Prague Linguistic Circle and his name is Roman Jacobson. So we talk about uh, Viktor Shavosky and Roman Jacobson in detail in my audio online course. I talk about all the important works written by all important uh, literary theorists and what all things they have talked about in their theories. Uh, I take up each and every writer who is concerned with different literary theory. You can get the list of all the writers that I cover under literary theories in my website www.arpitakarva.com. Uh, if you like the kind of writers and the kind of uh, structure that I have developed for literary theory, you can subscribe to my online course because once you enroll in my online course, I will provide you detailed audio lectures about each and every literary theory and will prepare you for UGC Net English Literature. Now let's talk about the third important theory which is structuralism. Structuralism, uh, like word signify kar hai, it talks about structures. According to structuralism, her cheese is a structure. Everything in this universe is a structure. And in order to understand the elements of the structure, you must need to understand the other elements of that structure. In order to understand India, you need to understand what Asia is, then what Earth is, what solar system is, what universe is. You can only understand India in relation to universe. If you don't know what universe is, what countries are, what continent is, then you will not be able to understand You would not be able to understand what India is. Okay, so everything in our structure can be understood only in relation to the other things which are a part of that same structure. Like now let's look at a novel. If you want to understand a novel, there are a lot of sentences in it. Sentences are made up of words. So only when you understand the words, you will be able to understand the novel. You can't understand a novel without words. First, you will understand the words, then you will understand the sentences, then you will understand the paragraphs, then you will understand the novel slowly. So this is what structuralism is all about. Now let's get an example. Uh, for example, we have a sentence, dog bark bird at. This sentence doesn't make sense because this sentence ke jitne words hai, wo ek dusre ke relation mein mein nahi aare. But if I reframe the sentence and I say that 
डॉग बार्क्स एट द वर्ड इट मेक सेंस बिकॉज हर एक वर्ड इस सेंटेंस का दूसरे वर्ड के रिलेशन में समझ में आ रहा है so this is what structuralism is all about it says that you need to understand language in order to understand the novel aapko language ka structure samajhna hoga agar aap novel ko samajhna chahte hain ya kisi bhi text ko samajhna chahte hain structuralism ke andar jo sabse important theorist hain unka naam hai ferdinand de saussure unhone theory diya hai semiotics ke upar semiotics is basically study of sign so koi bhi ek word hai that is a sign in itself कोई भी एक इमेज आप देखते हैं दैट इज अ साइन साइन इज मेड अप ऑफ टू थिंग्स सिग्निफायर एंड सिग्निफाइड सिग्निफायर इज अ वर्ड या इमेज सिग्निफाइड इज द कॉन्सेप्ट दैट कम्स इन आवर माइंड व्हेन वी लुक एट द वर्ड और अ इमेज फॉर एग्जांपल मैंने बोला डॉग डॉग वर्ड बोलते ही हम सबके दिमाग में अलग अलग इमेजेस आती है डॉग की इफ आई लव पग्स देन मेरे दिमाग में पग की इमेज आएगी इफ यू हैव सीन अ स्ट्रीट डॉग इन द मॉर्निंग टुडे यू माइट थिंक ऑफ अ स्ट्रीट डॉग सो सिग्निफायर इज अ वर्ड डॉग व्हिच आई सेड एंड सिग्निफाइड इज द इमेज और अ कांसेप्ट जो आपके दिमाग में डेवलप हुआ है डॉग बोलने के बाद ओके okay. जो डॉगीनेस के कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स है अगर कोई छोटा बच्चे से मैं पूछूं हु इज अ डॉग तो वो डिटरमाइन करेगा एंड डिफाइन करेगा डॉग को कि एक फोर पैरों पे चलने वाला एनिमल होता है जो बाक करता है एंड हु कीप्स ऑन बेगिंग हिज टेल एंड सच काइंड ऑफ क्रिएचर इज कॉल्ड अ डॉग सो दिस कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स आर द कॉन्सेप्ट दैट इज द सिग्निफाइड सिग्निफायर इज द वर्ड और इमेज जैसे आप रेड देखते हैं तो इधर इट कैन सिम्बलाइज love it can symbolize danger so red is signifier signified is the concept that brings in the comes in our mind when we look at the color red this is all about ferdinand de saussure inhone aur bhi bahut cheezon ke bare mein baat kari hai has talked about lang and ferrol he has talked about uh, synchrony and diatomy and various other concept but ek jo bahut important cheez samajhne ki hai wo ye hai ki this relation between the signifier and the signified is arbitrary it is culturally determined aaj agar ek chote bacche ko bachpan se ye bola jaye that red symbolizes peace तो वो धीरे धीरे रेड को पीस से लिंक करने लग जाएगा सो रेड का ऑटोमेटिक मतलब लव या ब्लड या वॉर या यू नो डेंजर नहीं है इट हैज बीन कम ओवर द पीरियड ऑफ टाइम ड्यू टू द रिपीटेटिव यूज ऑफ रेड विथ ब्लड रेड विथ वॉर रेड विथ लव सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर कल्चरली डिटरमाइंड उसका इनहेरिट मीनिंग नहीं है सो ये चीज बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है कि स्ट्रक्चरिज्म जब आप समझे तो आप ये देखें कि स्ट्रक्चर जो है वो कहीं ना कहीं आपको नॉवल या किसी वर्क को अंडरस्टैंड करने में हेल्प करते हैं प्लस एट द सेम टाइम स्ट्रक्चर ही हैं जिनकी वजह से हम लैंग्वेज को समझ पाते हैं सिग्निफायर एंड सिग्निफाइड को जब हम समझते हैं और इनके अपने का आपस का जो लिंक है उसे जब हम समझते हैं तभी हम एक लैंग्वेज को समझ पाते हैं Now let's look at another important literary theory which came in response to structuralism it is called post structuralism or deconstructionism post structuralism as the name suggests it came after structuralism and it opposes the idea placed by structuralist thinkers structuralism believes ki language ko samajhne ke liye agar aapne language ke structure ko samajh liya sign symbol symbol signifier signified in terms ko samajh liya to aap language ko samajh payenge and language ko samajh liya to aap kisi bhi text ko kisi bhi important literary work ko samajh payenge but post structuralist thinkers say ki communication itna easy nahi hai i cannot communicate what i want to communicate maine agar yellow dog bola to aap sabke dimag mein alag alag images aayegi yellow dog ki so mere dimag mein jo yellow dog ki image hai that will differ from the image created in your brain so how can i communicate the same thing to you agar main ek person ka description deti hu aapko ki wo aisa tha ye tha usne is type ke kapde pehen rakhe the uska height itna tha weight itna tha to kya hum sab ek hi tarah ke insaan ko imagine kar payenge nahi we all will think of certain different kind of people so mere dimag mein jo image hai main words ke through wo image aapke dimag mein create nahi kar pa rahi and that is how language fails so post structuralists say that language itself is uncentered if you have ever played the game of word association ki main ek word bolti hu usse related word aapko bolna hota hai then i say that word and you will tell another word for example i say rose you will say love i will say love you might say valentines day i say valentines day you will say gifts so this is how you build up 
different different things and you link each and everything with other things. So, अगर आप post structuralism की बात करें तो आप समझेंगे कि Jack Derrida, the great post structuralist thinker, in his work of grammatology has mentioned this thing that every signifier leads to another signifier and will never lead to a signified. So, entire sign becomes of no use because if I say lion. It will not lead to an image of lion, but it will lead to another concept like king. Lion को आपने king से associate किया, king को आपने crown से associate किया, crown को आपने empire से associate किया. So lion को actually आप किसी signified तक पहुँच ही नहीं पा रहे हैं आप हर एक signifier से दूसरे signifier तक पहुँच रहे हैं and the process keeps on continuing. Also Jack Derrida has talked about a very very important concept of aporia. Aporia basically means confusion. So he says that you know we need to be happy in this place of confusion. कहीं भी अगर आप किसी भी चीज को structurally करना चाहेंगे तो आप देखेंगे कि कोई भी चीज centered नहीं है, किसी भी चीज का कोई center नहीं है. So we should feel happy in this state of confusion and which he calls aporia. There are various other post-structuralist thinkers who have given very good post-structuralism theories. We discuss all those theories as a part of our course. So if you wish, you can join my course. Also, if you are not joining my course, at least go to my website, look at the theorists mentioned under post-structuralism and do start reading about them. Because Jack Derrida is just one theorist. There are several other theorists who are important from that point of view. There are a lot of other literary theories. We'll be covering all the other literary theories in my next video. So stay tuned and uh, keep loving literature. Also, if you like this video, then do give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have any questions, any queries, you can write that in the comment section below. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you are notified every time I come online. Also, go and check my Facebook page. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, Telegram and WhatsApp. The links of all the social media platform is given in the description box below. Go and check all the social media because I post GoNet quiz every day which helps you to keep yourself on toes and prepare for UGC Net English in a very revolutionary way. Till the time we meet next, bye bye, happy learning and keep loving literature.